Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers, practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guest today is Herb Cohen, and we'll be talking with Herb about his psychotherapy practice. And I'd now like to invite Herb to come on screen. Hello, Hi. Herb. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Nice to be with you. Thanks for joining me. It's great to be here. When we connected initially, I think it was uh, either LinkedIn or email, and uh, I asked to uh, learn a little bit about you. You, you sent me this paragraph, uh, which was a brief bio, and I'd like to share it with those listening and watching so they, they're acquainted with you and some of the work you do. You sure. shared, I'm a psychotherapist specializing in trauma eating disorders and addiction i have noticed that many of my patients who had severe trauma histories developed special gifts as part of being hyper vigilant for their own protection as children as adults they are often body empathic or have psychic abilities many sense the presence of guides but need help connecting I help them connect and develop spiritually, and this is so wonderful as they reinvent themselves emerging from the darkness. I do EMDR and energy work and teach energy work to those interested. It has been very rewarding to integrate spirituality with trauma recovery, and sometimes my un own guides cannot resist getting involved with the healing work in the sessions. And so the biography, Herb, talks about specializing in trauma eating disorder and addiction has your psychotherapy practice always focused on those specific healing needs um i'm my practice is limited i'm a specialist so i i i, I work in a community a large community of psychotherapists who do general psychotherapy and okay. a little bit of this and a little bit of that but I'm the referral source for the heavy stuff. So the people who are their failures, the recidivist peak relapsers, the really difficult eating disorders, the really difficult, um, the heavy, heavy trauma people who have heavy dissociation and just aren't responding to talk therapy. Talk therapy is really not indicated. And even the EMDR therapy, the people trained in, in trauma work, because you get trained in EMDR doesn't mean that you're trained in trauma. And that's a, a kind of a misgiving about EMDR training. Mm -hmm. EMDR training is two weekends, you learn a methodology. Well, that methodology is kind of like learning brain surgery. You're going into people's minds and you're working mm -hmm. with very delicate memory systems. And if you really don't understand the neurobiology of trauma and the stages of recovery and the whole thing, there's a whole thing that's needed to be known before you do that stuff, it would be kind of like a doctor learning how to do surgery before getting a medical degree. You, you can get in there, but does he know what he's doing? Right. And that's the situation. So a lot of the EMDR therapists who have gotten their feet wet without that extra work will refer to me because I, I kind of, I'm very comfortable there. What is it about um, the work you do that invites you to be that go-to person for um, uh, the, I think you, you use the term that, the the tough cases are the repeating cases. I, okay. So I, I, my practice, uh, really started out, uh, working with severely mentally ill people. Okay. People who were throwaways in, in the, when they had institutionalization in state hospitals and, you know, they were. 25-year histories in state institutions, and these people 
were very sick. They, we didn't have good medications at that time. Mm -hmm. They were actively psychotic, and the idea was to integrate these folks into the community. Right. And that was our charge as, as outpatient, as community members. And, and that was quite challenging, you know? That was really challenging. And, and so this is what I got used to starting out as a norm. And so I was challenged from the get-go and learned that that's, well, that's what you do. So uh, when I moved into addiction work and I moved into, well, okay, so when I moved into addiction work, uh, we really got it, how to get people sober. Hmm. But the problem is they fell apart. And so we said, we're, we're so good at doing this work. We got everyone sober. Why are they doing so badly? And, and okay, they were feeling now, but what they were feeling was the issue. They were feeling pain. Yeah. And uh, almost all of them had severe trauma histories. And at that time, back 20 years ago, there was no trainings in trauma. There was no place to go to get trained. And I found, I got lucky, I found a committee that was all about trauma. I'm the chair of that committee now. And on that committee were, you know, so how did we start out with trauma? We had four people with DID, which is Dissociative Identity Disorder. So we had like, you know, uh, uh, the trauma spectrum, they're at the highest end of disability. Right. The, the, the most severe trauma stories and these folks were where I began to learn about Trump. Mm -hmm. And, and I, on the committee, there were people who somehow miraculously got recovered who were DID. And I grabbed these people and I was like, you got to help me here. You got you to gotta teach me all about everything you know about uh, hurting yourself and, and dealing with this and all your parts. And, mm -hmm. and basically, that, that the committee put on a, a conference with Bessel Van der Kolk, and we got really great people because they were affordable then. There was no circuit like there is now, you know? They have these guys that do the circuit and they do all the same conferences year after year. Well, there was no circuit then, so right. we were hosting these conferences and, and they were very affordable. We had Bessel Van der Kolk twice and I got, I got to actually present on stage with the guy. So it was like, you know, we were talking about mindfulness and, 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 and trauma. and so. I really got to learn hands-on, and I got to be kind of one of these folks that was kind of, I was on this education and training committee, so I was really paying attention because I was putting a training module together so that we could teach other people about trauma, because mm -hmm. this is what was needed. And um, some of the slides I have, so I do trainings now for free. I do three-hour, very intensive trainings. I bring a, a client with me to tell her story and I go to agencies that aren't trauma-informed and we do these trainings hmm. and there's now been an ACE study that came out, the Adverse Childhood Events study, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically this study came out I think 2013 and when I looked at the slides of this study which basically linked trauma to medical histories to addictions, it linked it to everything. I looked at my original slides, which were indicating all the medical conditions that I observed, that I observed, that not, not from any research, that were in my, my PowerPoint, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like validating everything that we've been experiencing. Mm -hmm. it's all, I didn't have to change my slides. Mm -hmm. I could reference them now to these to the, the Center for Disease Control who was hosting the study. Right. But I, I I was getting validation for things that we were actually experiencing, yeah. so it felt really great. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's how I got involved in it. I got involved in the deep end. I was in the deep end of the pool, and I said, "Oh my gosh, I've got to learn how to swim." Yeah. And and once I swam, I go, "You know what? I kind of like it in the deep end. It's really rewarding work." Well, there must also have been some inspiration, perhaps, perhaps not. Uh, conscious of it as you were as you were going through it but now when you look back you know these particular we'll call them disciplines trauma eating disorder addiction what do you think was the inspiration for you to embrace well, these particular the other, you know I mean if you 
if you're, if you're doing addiction work, you're going to hit trauma. And, and if you do trauma, you're going to hit eating disorders and all kinds of maladaptive mm -hmm. coping, including OCD is part of trauma 50% mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. So that becomes treatable. If we can treat trauma, we can treat these things. So um, what I learned was a lot of uh, these uh, traumatic conditions uh, had to do with attachment. And so the relationship between mom and dad, mm -hmm. and, or, or whoever your caregiver was, Mm -hmm. And that that was as important as any incidental trauma. And in the case of addiction, it's one or the other. It's either an attachment issue or a trauma, and the same with eating disorders. Mm -hmm. So we could distill their history back to specific things and work on those things, and we could easily find a way to resolve these, these attachment disorders mm -hmm. and these attachments to maladaptive behavior. Mm -hmm. But now I'm finding something else is happening. What's happening now is um, I've learned that there's two types of dissociation. When people are overwhelmed and they can't defend themselves, they go from hypervigilance, which is fight flight, into hypervigilance, which could be shutting down and submissive. But what happens inside their mind is they're out of there. Mm -hmm. They've left. So people can wall off memory with physical walls inside their brain where those neurons just separate from each other and isolate, or they can energetically separate. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're going out of body, and they're describing that they're in the wall, or they're on the ceiling watching, or they're in the floorboard waiting for the, the noise to get quiet, and then they rejoin their body. Mm -hmm. Now, both of these uh, protect the self from the memory of, of these events, although the person has the same symptoms as PTSD. They all need maladaptive behaviors. They're all having anxiety, but they don't know why. Or they have some impressions of things that happen to them, but they don't have all the details. Mm -hmm. When I go into uh, doing EMDR with some feeling states, with the people who have out-of-body memory, everything comes out. Everything opens up. Everything is available to us. Not all at once, but we can get to everything with very little effort. With the walled off dissociation, I have to use hypnosis or other methods to get in there. But now, I'm using spirit guides. So, so um, let me talk about energy and frequency. Please, please, please. Okay. So we know there's um, scales of, of, of frequency relating to uh, emotion. So, for example, we know that shame is like a low frequency emotion, and self-loathing and, and, and fear are very low frequency, dense uh, frequencies, whereas love is a very high frequency. So um, I developed a technique called Flow that's on my website where people could learn how to rapidly ground by going into their body to feel uh, their own frequency, to feel a slight vibration, a tingle perhaps, in the bottoms of their feet, and then maybe a gentle pulsing in their legs. And we work it up into the body. And now they're, they're grounded because it's so subtle to find these gentle vibrations, you have to shut your mind down mm -hmm. to get them. So uh, what happens is they're grounded now, and, and now we're, we're feeling that vibration. So what I ask them to do is to pretend that it's moving. Just imagine that it's like a river flowing. So we have a flowing river. So now their frequency is going up a little bit because this actually feels nice. So now their frequency is rising. And now what I do is um, I, I ask them to go to a higher place and, and I ask them to go to the vibration of love and to engage the experience of love, find what that vibration feels like, and flow it through their stream that's running through their body. Mm -hmm. Now, if they say, I, I can't do that, I'm not allowed because I'm unlovable, we get a box, we put unlovable in the box, and we send it over to the other we pretend the knees are a waterfall, and we just watch it go over the waterfall. Then we go to love, and we can go. 
And what happens is if we raise people's frequency to a high frequency, like a radiance, mm -hmm. and we say, I say to them, I say, repeat after me, I say, I am love. Mm -hmm. Look that down the road. I am, I am love. Get flow going. I am radiance. Radiance being love everywhere. Love with everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. And they, they flow that. Now we're in a very high frequency. What happens is there's no fear. There's no self loathing at a high frequency. So, um, this is, we could do amazing things with that technique. I'm looking at frequency. I'm glad you brought up the energy work and working with people to develop their spiritual side of their spirituality. And we talked about that actually just very briefly before we actually began the interview when we initially connected. Has that aspect of your work always been with you? Or is it something that has grown within you and you started offering through you to your clients at a point in your in your okay. career, so I've always been into spirituality from high school on. Um, there was no religion in my family, mm -hmm. so I sought it. Um, I didn't know what God was, so I went into like Buddhism, which was non theistic, and I was comfortable reading those books. I wasn't comfortable reading a book that had the word God in it. Right. So I went to a religion that had no God, and um, got into energy work at the same time. So parallel, I was doing Buddhism and energy work at the same time, and I had some wild experiences with energy, some uh, paranormal things happening with energy. Mm -hmm. And I started to really respect energy, and um, I always taught Tai Chi and meditation when I ran an outpatient program, and I've always embraced the sense of spirituality, of the spiritual. But it wasn't until I got into my private practice, what happened was I got hit by a car. Hmm. And in the process of being hit, I felt a vacuum over my head, and I went straight up, out of the path of the car that had already made contact with me. I was pulled out of the way, landed safely elsewhere in this parking lot, and um, was taken to the hospital and it was in the scratch on me. I was fine. And um, I realized that this thing that pulled me out of the way was something else. And I didn't believe in angels or I shied away from that. I even stopped doing Reiki because I couldn't stand the new age associated with it. Mm -hmm. all that. It was, it was disingenuous to me. I felt you know, it was inauthentic. That's why I ran into Buddhism, because I said, I'm going to go to the authentic religion sure. and do energy work through that. And so um, I, I then started to question this. <laughs> and I started really doing higher level energy work. I did uh, light body work, luminescence, and then um, got connected to my guides, and from there, they said, I said to them, listen, I, I, want to, I want to deepen my practice. What should I study next? And they said, we'll work with you. I, and, and you can heal people using energy, using mm -hmm. compassion. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm down. So they mm -hmm. had me um, stay, get, connecting with them, getting out of the way. They would come in and rip open my third eye and the crown, and they would send an energy through me. And they had me paint. Now, I've, I'm an art therapist, so it's been about 20 years since I painted, but I set up a watercolor table. And what happened is I, I said, when you paint, get out of the way. And what that meant was they wanted to paint. So I have two guys that like to paint. Now, they paint through frequency. So I'm feeling a vibration when I put my paintbrush over the colors. There's a there's there's the energy coming in, and that tells me what color to go to, and then I make a mark, and oh, ooh, I can feel the energy, and they direct me mm -hmm. through energy through my body. Mm -hmm. So um, the experience of painting here's a, a channel painting I can show you. Please. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So 
it's actually a lot of uh, light and form morphing, uh, manifesting and unmanifesting. Mm -hmm. And this is their world, actually. Mm -hmm. I started to become part of their world, and energetic experience became really, really high frequency. It started to be that I was experiencing God, even though I, I've never experienced God. I don't know what God was. All of a sudden, I, it mm. felt like I was experiencing God. Mm. And um, this frequency, so I do this every day. I've been doing it for two years. I have over hundreds of paintings now. It, it's there. I don't sign my name because it's their work. I just date them. But the energy has been very intense. And the other thing I've been doing with my clients now is um, I'm having them read Paul Selig books. Hmm. So Paul Selig has uh, channeled works. He has like nine guides. But what the books, the guides do is they um, embed the books with energy. And they actually download, they have attunements throughout the books. So your frequency is being raised. And then what happens is crud floats to the surface. Sure. And, and then we transmute it yeah. through the book. And then your frequency goes higher. And then another layer comes to the surface. And so all these, he's got five books. I've, I've read four of the five now. And um, I'm actually on the first one because they, my guides directed me to the second one to start with. But my clients are experiencing the elevation of frequency. So while I'm working with them to release the negative, the trauma that's fixed, that their brain has locked, I'm releasing the dissociated memory, I'm releasing the trauma and the fear. And at the same time, they're doing work to elevate the frequency. Mm -hmm. And once you elevate the frequencies from them, it's not temporary. Like with my, my method, it's temporary. You do it and then for 10 minutes you feel great. But for them, the frequency stays with you through these mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. And you can't feel fear. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing the relationship between frequency and spirituality and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's all about Connecting with your true self. And anything that's not, that's egoic is a lie and can't manifest. Mm -hmm. And they actually go through your memory system. And they said, you know, at the very last book, the very last thing they do is they say, look, you're going to come to life where everything usually, uh, if we have, we're always having the past inform our present. And that's, that's, kind of an ego state, but sometimes you can't help it because it's our memory. You see someone that you, is from high school, you run into someone, and, and guess what? The past is going to come rushing in to the present, and you can't stop it. You know, it's just the way our brain works. That they did was they said, well, anything negative or anything that's a pattern, we're going to transmute for you. So you could feel this energy washing through you, and they're allegedly transmuting any memories that are going to have a negative belief system, mm -hmm. if, if should that come up, if I should see someone from my past that triggers that, if it's positive, the association will happen. If it's negative, it's not going to come up as negative. It's transmuted. It's been reclaimed at a higher frequency. Hmm. And so the books are about reclaiming ourselves at a higher frequency mm -hmm. so that we can be in the manifested spiritual state that we are. Mm -hmm. Be the spiritual beings that we are, and see everything as 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 from that viewpoint, from that lens, where everything is is love. Everything is high frequency. Mm -hmm. So when we're like that, we're seeing the high frequency in others, even though they may be presenting lower frequency. And so now I'm becoming a trainer of these tests because I'm living them. And working, integrating that with trauma work and addiction and eating disorders, mm -hmm. it's just a perfect thing. It's, it's wonderful to hear how you're integrating what might be thought of as a, the traditional um, psychology theories with, with the spiritual. Uh, it's wonderful to, to hear about the integration of, of the two, which the center is very much 
Oh, about. I'm also learning a shortcut. So uh, I can do this very long hypnotic process to get into Waldorf associative memory, or I can connect someone to their spirit guides, mm. and we bring their spirit guides into the room and go, where's that memory we need to get to, that key memory that's mm -hmm. blocking everything, that yeah. everything's connected to? Can you show us that memory? And the next thing you know, we're there. Hmm? This is easy. <laughs> Well, who needs to work hard? <laughs> now, Herb, if someone wanted to reach out to you uh, and work with you, how could they do so? By email, via website? Yes, I have a website, it, and it's got it's loaded with all kinds of information about attachment, about shame, addiction. There's tools on there. Uh, there's great stuff. There's even a checklist to find a trauma therapist. Okay. So if you don't want me, you can find someone else. It's What's the URL? Uh, Okay, it's Herb Cohen, H-E-R-B-C-O-H-E-N, dot O-N-E, dot one spelled out. Okay. So Herb Cohen, dot one. And the that has my phone number, has all my address, my contact information. I'm in, in New York, on Long Island, in the Huntington Township. Okay. And if someone wanted to reach and out I, to I do distant work, too, through Skype okay. and Zoom. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Now, if someone did want to reach out to you directly by email... Uh, I'm assuming they can get in touch with you uh, through the website, but do you accept direct email? Yes, outreach? and actually there's an email form on right on the website. Okay. So if you just scroll down a little bit, they can contact me very easily. Perfect. Okay. All my information is there. We'll make sure to put your uh, website address in the scrolling credits at the end. Okay. Thanks so much, Herb. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. You're welcome. It was fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.